Okay, just applying it with the brush. I'm going to divide the composition into um, three areas. So I'll be looking at your background, your middle ground and your foreground. So I have to stand up and do this so I can actually see where the water is going. You want quite a lot of water in that area. And then just drop in some colour. Now you can use some food colouring if you wish and I can show you that in another video. But just drop in some colour. I'm using um, French Ultramarine and you might want to dilute it a little bit so it runs a little bit. You can add other blues if you like. I'm just going to do a bit of an experiment just to show you. And this is creating more atmospheric um, effects that you can use. And once it's dry, you can paint over the top of it. So just load your brush up with some really bright colors. Quite a lot of water, needs a lot of water because otherwise the cling wrap and the effects I'm trying to achieve won't um, work out. Okay, I've already cut a piece of cling wrap here and this is to be done in stages. So you need to wait sometimes 24 hours for this to dry. Okay, so then you just push that over the top, press it in. You can actually start making some landscapes. So in here you can see, I didn't do this deliberately, but you can see a little bit of a mountain. You can push it up if you want a little bit higher. Um, and the more creases you have and push in the cling wrap, I find cling wrap easier to use because it's softer than cellophane and wax paper, but some artists do use the wax paper. Makes really cool effects, lovely effects. Okay, now I'd have to leave that. If I wanted more colour, I could lift it and add more colour. So I might see what happens if we add a little bit more colour. Okay, and the colour has to be really, really runny. All right, so just adding a bit of water there. All right, and what you can do, you could lift it up a little bit, but I've decided to tape it down, so I'm stretching the, the paper. I just play around with it um, and leave it. And what happens, I did an experiment earlier on just using some um, food colouring, just to see if food colouring, if you don't have paint at home and you want something inexpensive, and I had a yellow, an egg yellow colour and also a red and just to see what would happen and the results are similar to that. So as you can see, you can see close up that there are really lovely lines happening within the actual colour as it bleeds. Now if I was sort of reflecting back on this, I think that I've used a little bit too much red and probably should have used less and a little bit more yellow and I can work back into that later. So that's what I'm hoping to get with the effects of the sky here, is that you can actually see the sky happening, or you might decide that you'll flip it around and that might be your foreground and you'll do something else for the sky. And as you can see here, this is quite thick, the glad wrap here, so it's, it's having a different textural effect, which I'm going to be very keen to see what happens to it once it dries. Now that this is dried, we can peel off the actual um, cling wrap. And as you can see, there's a lot of beautiful textural qualities that have happened. And some of these almost look like some sort of a landscape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some more water to it and work back in with some watercolours and see what happens. I'm using um, ultramarine blue, phalo blue, Payne's grey as two of my colours. I have two brushes here that I love to use. One for applying the water and the other one for applying the paint. And I try not to mix them. I have two jars of water here. One has the colour and the other one has just clean water. I also have a little bottle here that I can apply some spritz so it allows it to run. Okay. I'm going to leave a little bit of white, 
just to make a distinction so the paint doesn't bleed through. And have a look. Make sure that you've applied a reasonable amount of water. You can do it quite loosely. You might want some areas of white to stain. You might have some heavier areas along the foreground and maybe in the corner here. Okay, so that's the water. Maybe quite generous with the um, ink. Make sure that it is very, very wet. And it will only run where it's wet, not where it's starting to dry. Okay, sometimes you might want to just add a little bit more water. Okay. Quite generous. taken to using a thick brush which are <clears throat> square brush which I don't shouldn't do it's just applying the paint and I want it to work to work pretty quickly so I need to drop the color in really really fast what you don't want is you don't want too many brush strokes appearing so you need to put a lot of water and a lot of colour. Adding a little bit of Payne's Grey. So just sticking with my blues at the moment, I might run some other colours in on a different layer later on. And you don't have to stick this down on the board if you don't want to. You can actually decide to put it on a separate board, lift the board up so it's a lot smaller and allow it to run and do its thing. You never know with this sort of painting what's going to happen. Sometimes, as I've said in the past, you have a lot of um, times where you think, oh, this hasn't really worked. Okay, so I might just spray it a bit. And spraying it just gives it another sort of dimension. It creates a different texture. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a little bit of darkness in here, quite a lot. I seem to have a fair bit of... Move it around. We don't want any brush marks. Want to be quite liberal with it. Okay, and then do the same thing here. And maybe even up, scrunch it up the side. Okay, you might decide just to Blend that through. It is quite a messy technique. It's quite a lot of fun. Works out really well. You may have a few. Sometimes when they dry, they dry a lot nicer than when they're wet. You think, oh, that's a bit of a disaster. But starting to work. It's creating, as you can see, I'm just running some different colours through. Or just Payne's Grey in here um, a little bit more intensity of color to see what happens just to create different tonal values for the foreground 
Don't to be too precious the way you apply it. Okay, and then you can really move it around under here. Okay, you might just want to put a little bit in here as well. Want some very dark areas. So to give it a, maybe I put a little bit too much water. You can just wait for it just to dry up a touch and add a little bit more Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey is a lovely colour. It can flatten your, your um, image a little bit, so sometimes you do need to add a little bit more vibrance by adding an ultramarine blue. Or phalo blue is another one that I use. Okay, so basically I need now need to wait a while for that to dry before I can add another layer and work back into it. So I might just do that. Okay. You can go back. I'm just going to go back now where it's dry up here. And maybe try to see things within it. I didn't create a landscape. That that happened with the Glad Wrap. But while I'm looking at it, I can actually see dark areas in here that I can play around with and add a little bit more colour to bring it out and define it as a, as a landscape. I don't want to take away the texture because I think it works really, really well. So, just to bring it out. And if you're too, if you're worried, I tend to get worried that I'm going to, you know, wreck the beautiful landscape that I've created with the Glad Wrap. If, if that's the case, just lightly build up the layers rather than going quite hard. I can see some interesting textures. And what I would look at is some of these look like little rocks on a beach. some of those out and I've mixed a little bit of Payne's grey here might decide to go just a little bit different in here oh, that's a bit too much blue there we go so you have a little bit of that color and I think it might be a little bit too dark too black the good thing about watercolors is that you can automatically clean it up if it's um, if you feel the colour is not right, you be careful though. It does dry very quickly. I'll put a little bit of darkness in there. Just run some water in there and just let it dry. Extend it. And as the um, landscapes recede into the background, they're obviously going to get less detail. I'm just going to show you that. Just a bit of water. Okay. 
Uh, if I do it really lightly, I can add another hue over the top as a layer, but then you can still see all the lovely textures coming through that the, uh, the, um, the uh, sorry, the lad rat created. You continue working it. I mean, you can take hours to, you know, look at it and see different things there. Probably the best thing to do is to actually step back have a look at it from a distance and then you can see we may need to add different hues of blues or you've added too much Payne's grey in one area it's starting to look really lovely now So as you can see, you don't need a lot of paint. I'm not using a great deal of paint at all and I'm having quite a lot of fun with it. The thing is that you can actually overwork some of these too because you don't know where to stop. I suspect that that's probably a lot of artists' problem. That, you know, the artwork's never finished. Oh, you come in and you think, oh, I can do just a little bit here or there. You never quite work out when it is actually finished. And a great friend of mine once said, don't fuss, don't fuss, don't fuss. In other words, quickly do it, apply it, let it go, and it's finished. And sometimes if you do fuss too much, you tend to lose what it's all about. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that for now and just see what happens. Um, it's fairly interesting at the moment. And then I'll have a look at my viewfinder and see, well, I might not use all of this, I might just use some of it.